morning, we are going to start our worship this morning by singing Emmanuel. So please do join with us from your homes.
Well, good morning, everyone. This isn't uh, what we were expecting. We thought we'd be in church with uh, hopefully a crowd of people, but uh, you're here now in our front room. <laughs> and uh, my name is Barry, and I'm here with Roz and with Rachel. And we're going to have a look today at God with us. So wherever you are, whether you're in Torbay or Toronto, you're very welcome, and it's good to be able to worship together today. I'd like to start with a poem that uh, was written for Tear Fund. We were all strangers, going about our own business, living our own lives. There was us, there was them. There was everything in between. We were all a little alone. And then there was the word, Christ made flesh, heaven as close as a mother to the child being cradled in her arms. The one who made us, made into us. And the sick were touched, the sinners invited, the outcasts included, the humble praised, the curtain torn. And the arms stretched out to give grace to all. Once we were strangers. God and love were just ideas. But now, now we are neighbors. Good morning. Well, here we are, the very first service of 2022. Christmas is over. And all that busyness and shopping and getting cards for Auntie Mabel and friends and neighbours is done, thank goodness. Now it's time to sit back and take a break. There's no rush today, is there? It's a bit of a pause. The winter solstice is past, which means, of course, the days were going to get lighter and we're heading into our new year. But I thought it would be quite nice at this point to take a little look back before we look forward and rush on. And I thought I'd think about some of the Christmases that have passed. And I thought, what would remind me of some of my Christmases past? So I brought a few things with me. Here's the first thing. Some of the children will recognise this. Good old Superman. I think he's still around, isn't he? Superman on my son's... Uh, pillowcase. Uh, but pillowcases in our house were used as uh, to put our Christmas stockings in. We used to hang them up on the ends of the beds and in the morning they would be full of all sorts of goodies. But in the bottom of every single one, even in my own childhood, was something else. And it was, of course, a satsuma. I wonder how many of you remember the satsumas of your childhood. But what a great thing to remember Christmas's past. The colour, the texture, the feel, the smell, the smell when you peel it. Even if it's not Christmas, if you peel one of these, I guarantee you'll think of Christmas. So in a moment, I'm going to think about times that have been and times that have passed. And of course, some of those memories won't always be happy. There will be sad ones. Like me, there are things you remember which, well, they weren't so useful or helpful. But there are those special moments with children, with your parents, with friends. All those memories are there. And of course, it's not all paper and tinsel. There are those difficult ones, as I've said, and there are those amongst us that are, are special and precious. But overarching all of those, of course, is, as we know, the Christmas story, the coming of Jesus, recorded not just as a story, but in history, in a time and a specific place, the historical Jesus came. So I wondered if we could spend a few minutes now, without any rush or tear, just thinking about Christmases that have passed, things that we can give thanks for, things that we can give back to God and say thank you for those special times with those we've loved and those we've known. 
I often think of that verse in the hymn. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. It's a good phrase, isn't it? The hopes and fears. Let's bring them all now in prayer. Mm-hmm. Yes, let's, let's pray. And as we reflect on the, on the fact that God is with us, we've been singing in, about Emmanuel, God with us. And as we look back, as, as Ros has been uh, encouraging us to and helping us to just now, let's think about the, the things that have happened in, in this last year. Remembering that all through this last year, whether or not we recognised him, God was with us. Let's reflect on those good moments. Maybe with friends. Maybe with family. Maybe just the sunshine. Maybe the beauty of our surroundings. Perhaps those acts of kindness. Maybe being able to get away. Or perhaps the safe haven haven of home. Lord, for all those precious moments, those good moments of the year that we're just leaving behind us. Lord, we thank you that you were there with us. And then let's think about those times that that weren't so so easy. Lord, those difficult moments, perhaps there was a death of loved ones, perhaps illness or pain, perhaps there was loss of job, breakup of a relationship, And yet in all these things too, Lord, we recognise that you were with us. And sometimes in those times, it's even more evident as you carry us through those times. Lord, thank you that as we look back, we know that you are and still and were Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to read now from John chapter 20 and verse 19. And it's the story when Jesus appears to his disciples after his death and resurrection. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So the next thing I brought with me was an unopened present. It's curious, isn't it, to have an unopened present? I wonder if there are any in your house. Maybe one you've forgotten or it's fallen behind the tree or you've just thought, oh, I'll, I'll look at that later. They're always a bit of a curiosity, aren't they? There's been a lot on Facebook this year about not just giving presents, but giving presents, being together. Giving ourselves time and space to be with one another. And there's been a lot of uncertainty over the last two years, hasn't there? about where to meet, how to meet, if we can meet, with a mask, without a mask. And people have been very inventive. We've met in parks and gardens, and we've met outdoors or walking, or even on Zoom. And it's been frustrating at times. Mm. But now, now we're meeting online, just this moment, we can join together and we can share this time with one another. When the friends of Jesus were left confused and frightened after his crucifixion, they went into an upper room and they stayed there. They locked the doors. They just didn't know what to do. But what a shock, what a thrill it must have been when Jesus came among them. The joy of seeing him again, unbelievable, unimaginable. Here he was. He wasn't no longer the Emmanuel God with us as a baby, or even the Jesus who walked with them and talked with them and shared with them. This was the risen Jesus, come back from the dead. And he gave them a gift. He gave them peace. Twice he said, my peace I give you. And then he gave them the Holy Spirit. The Son had brought two special things to our lives. The Father had given the Son. The Son had brought down heavenly healing and forgiveness. And now the, the Son was giving the Holy Spirit. What an amazing thing that is, the Trinity. What a gift and what a mystery. So what about this unopened present? Someone once pointed out to me, that if you open a present, even then, if you don't take it and use it and make it your own, you haven't really received it. Is this gift from God a present you have opened and you have received? We don't have to be in a special place. We don't have to wait for a special time to take this gift because God is here right now among us and with you at home. Shall we sit quietly for a moment and give our presence to God so that he can share his with us? Rachel's going to pray. Thank you. Yes, let's um, spend the next few moments together just uh, with the Lord, just allowing him to make his presence uh, that much more real, that much more tangible to us at this time, the beginning of this fresh new year. 
I'm just going to light a candle to help us to reflect on all that Jesus means to us. And we know that one of the names of Jesus is the light of the world. So as we, we look at the candle, we, we recognise that Jesus is the light of the world. And we invite you, Lord Jesus, to be the light in every part of our world. Both for us individually, for us as a church family, for us as a nation and across the world. And as we reflect, I'm just going to lead us through uh, just a time of, of quiet um, prayer. And I'll, I'll give you prompts um, through the next few minutes together. So, thank you. So let's first just uh, ask the Lord to be present in our own lives and that of our families. Then let's ask the Lord to be light across our nation, to be present, to be the light across our nation at this time. And then lastly, let's ask the Lord to be present across our world, to be the light to the world, where there might be persecution, famine, war, and of course the pandemic. Let's quietly ask the Lord to bring his light into these situations. Lord, thank you that you are the light of the world. And as we've thought and, and brought uh, individuals, situations, nations before you now, we speak your light into the darkness, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
So here's my last gift. I know it doesn't look that exciting, but it is really useful. Now a torch is always handy, I think. <laughs> I love traveling and I always like to be prepared. So I was given this rather lovely new torch. You know, sometimes even in my car, even though I'm reasonably tidy, things get stuck. They always manage to get stuck just down between the, the seat belt and the edge of the seat and under the corner of the mat. So this is going to be really useful because it's got a really good, really good torch. Can you see that? Really good torch. <laughs> <laughs> and with failing eyesight, that's even better. But of course, if I was out at night, which sometimes I am, and I should have to get out of my car, it would be even more useful. I could use it to shine my way along a path. I could even help someone else if they were looking for something or they themselves were lost. And I always think it's reassuring when you're on a path at night to be able to see just in front of you, even if you can't see a long way ahead, to just see in front of you where you're going. And there was actually one time when uh, I still lived in London and my family and I travelled here to Devon for a holiday. And it was dark and we were on the A303, which is a nice windy road. And we got a flat tyre. And poor Brian had to get out of the car on a blind bend, on a single lane of course, with a car full of luggage and me and sleeping children and change the tyre. And I only had a very small torch, but I, bravely I thought, stood at the edge of the bend and waved my arms a bit dramatically so that nobody would run him over as they came round the bend while he was changing the tyre. But this torch, oh, this torch has got something even better. Brian will be pleased. Look at this. Isn't that impressive? Look at that. Wow, no one's going to miss that. And secret part to this, it's magnetic. It will stick to the bonnet of the car or the side of the car and flash away and I won't have to stand in the middle of the road flapping <laughs> faintly to stop an accident. It's a great thing, isn't it, a warning light. It can save me and keep me safe. It can warn others. It has all sorts of really good uses. So, now there are two more new tools in these sort of torches, which I had never seen before. And when I got this, I looked at it again and I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. See this little hook here? It's a blade, very sneaky. If I was stuck or anyone else was trapped in their car, this blade would cut through the seat belt to help them be released and be safe. And this rather vicious looking thing here, which actually has a nice safety cap on it at the moment, this little thing here, I could, if I really needed to, and I really would have to, whack the glass, I could break the glass with this. So there are two more ways of getting out safely from a very dangerous situation. So thank you for my present. I'm really pleased with that one. But at the end of this service, I want us to think about one other thing. As we go into 2022, there's going to be lots of unknowns. It's going to be a new journey Hopefully it will be an exciting journey, but there will be lots of twists and turns on the way. And there will certainly be some dark places. So I hope that you will take with you these words which Jesus spoke to the crowds when he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What a promise. And what a gift. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and his peace. Don't let it be an unopened gift. Thank you, Ros. I'm just going to read now from Romans 5. And from the first verse of Romans 5, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Wonderful. Let's, let's pray once again. So as we look into the coming year, we may have hopes of our own. We may have fears. We have, may have doubts uh, and many other feelings. But in the same way that we recognised the Lord in the past year, we can know that he too is here, Emmanuel, God with us, as we look to this new year. We know, Lord, that you can always be trusted for what is ahead too. And I'd like just to finish um, our, our prayers with, with this one, uh, this prayer. Thinking about Jesus being the light of the world. You spoke, Lord, and light penetrated the darkness, a good light a strong light, a perfect light. But we went astray, loving darkness rather than light. So you sent your prophets to call us back towards the light. Yet still we were stubborn and afraid. So you sent your son to be the light of the world, the light shining in the darkness and the darkness never overcoming it. You, Lord, are our light and our salvation. You are our light and our truth. You are our light and our protector. You are our light and our fountain of life. Your light continues to shine in the dark places of our lives, in the dark places of our world. And though things may not be easy, the darkness cannot prevail. Thank you, Lord, the hope of the world. Amen. 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 So we're going to finish our service with um, a great hymn of praise, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And in the third verse, it, we sing about strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. So let's uh, sing that together, that final song together. <laughs>
So, Lord, you have called us and brought light into our lives. And now you ask us to be your light in the continuing darkness. At times we may be like a small, fragile, flickering candle. At times a bright, strong beam of light. Help us this coming week to let your light shine through us in our words and our actions, in our attitudes and relationships, with our hands, with our faces, our feet and our smiles. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So from us all, from Rachel and Roz and Sue and Les, whom you can't see now up there, and from Jill and from the Maloney Bunch, we wish you all a very happy new year. Yes. Happy new happy year. Happy new year. <laughs>